Hello and welcome. I'm Clueless Mike and you're listening to Modelling for Advantage. Okay, we have another 40k unboxing for you today and today we have Combat Patrol AL Dari. I mean, Eldar to you and I, but AL Dari to the copyright Nazis. So we're going to crack this box open and see what lovely stuff we have inside. Off with the cellophane as always. There we go. Throw that behind me. See if we can open the top of the box. There we go. Start with the boring bit first, the rule book. So we have, I say rule book, the assembly guide. All of these are reasonably modern kits. They have modern rules, lovely as ever, show you all the options, show you what to glue in which cases where there's moving parts on the models. Also shows you what not to glue, which is a feature I always really enjoy. Useless stats at the back, which are of no relevance to man or beast. So inside, what have we got first? Jet bikes. Now this is this is Eldari, Eldar, um, a friend of mine, my best mate, who I play 40k all the time. He plays Eldar, so I've had lots of contact with the Eldar kits over the years with them shooting me and such, but very little of actually seeing the bare models. So quite interesting for myself. I didn't realise that the jet bikes come one bike per sprue, which is quite interesting. Uh, so as you can see on the bike sprue, the bike sprue is really nice. It comes with multitude of weapons for every bike. So unlike a lot of squads where... This is a squad of three jet bikes, say. It would come with one heavy weapon you can upgrade. Each bike comes with a twin shuriken, a shuriken cannon, or a scat laser. And the rules let you upgrade them thusly as well. Uh, so there's one bike. I'm interested to see if there is any difference between the ones. So there we have the three different sprues. So they are very similar. Just seeing if they are exactly the same. I think they may be exactly the same, which is always slightly disappointing. Um, if they are, obviously I haven't assembled them, so I don't know if you can assemble them in slightly different poses. If we look on the picture on the front here, they look pretty similar, which not a big fan of, but on bikes like that, the actual rider is a small part of the model, um, and painting them slightly differently can overcome those issues in that case. We have here a Farseer. A Farseer um, is the probably the best unit in the Eldar Codex. You always take one. He has fabulous psychic powers. They're not awful in combat. Um, they're just really solid. They're reasonably cheap. They've got such good psychic power access um, to many different tables that they can roll on as well for their psychics or choose from. Um, and there's always a useful power. I don't think I've ever played against an Eldar army that doesn't have a farce here. And also in the modern rules, having multiple farce here is useful. So that even by multiple of this kit, if you can model it slightly differently, which you could easily do, um, then multiple farseers is no bad thing either. We've got bases. Uh, Eldar, weirdly, these look like, I'm just trying to see if it says, I don't think it will say anywhere on them, but I think Eldar come on an annoying base size of 28 millimeters now. In fact, let's quickly, he says reaching, I mean, there's never a space, there's never, Many times when a Space Marine isn't within reach in this room. So this is a very old Cypher model. Um, so that is on a 25mm base. So if I put that on there, it's definitely not a 32. So yeah, 28mm bases for the new Guardians, I suspect. Um, and maybe even the Farsi himself, because I can't see another base as yet. Uh, so in this set, there are six jet bikes. So there's the next single jet bike, same as before. And let's just grab the other two out as well. There's the other two, so six jet bikes. So jet bikes are a really solid unit and getting six of them in this kit, I was a bit surprised. I thought that it would just be three of them in. Uh, so this is the newest part of this kit, which is the new Guardian kit. Um, so three really packed sprues. Um, because this is a modern 40k kit, you, they really use the space on the sprue tremendously well, CAD design and all that. Uh, so we look, there's all different weapons to make them as either Guardians or Storm Guardians. Um, you've got the heavy weapon platform up here. Uh, it comes with all the different weapon options, missile launcher, I think that one is a... It's the Star Cannon, that's the one. Uh, scatter Laser, Shuriken Cannon, Bright Lance, a weapon for all occasions. Uh, also, if you take them as Guardian... Um, 
uh, defenders, or whichever the assault version are, uh, they can assemble it as a special shield dome platform as well. Uh, nice and interesting, you come with different close combat weapons you can give them. Um, they all come with shuriken catapults or shuriken pistols. Yeah, looks like a really solid kit. Um, it doesn't look like it's a repeat sprue at all, so they're all going to look slightly different. And one thing I noticed looking at the box art is that there are quite a few which are female sculpts, but as is norm now with modern 40k kits, um, certainly when they have a mix of male and female, like in the Dark Eldar, some of the new Imperial Guard stuff, the female models, you don't notice them to be in female just because they've got a big pair of boobs strapped to the front of them, boob plate, that kind of stuff, high heels. Then you just notice these ones are ladies, they have a slightly different chest plate design, they generally have a slightly leaner look, um, their legs curve in a slightly different manner, but it's really subtle differences which makes it look far more natural and makes the army look far more realistic as well, especially for the Eldar who are an army where their civilian populace goes to war for them in the form of guardians and such. Uh, so that's those, you've got various heads, looks like a really nice kit to put together. Um, haven't actually put one together myself so don't know but I think you can make loads of different poses and stuff from that. And lastly at the bottom here we have a Wraith Lord. Now this one is quite an old model, let's see if I can extract that and a bit of stringy plastic there. Quite an old model, one of the things you can tell is looking at that sprue, look at the space on that sprue, there is massive areas of space there. Um, but that said, it's still a really nice looking model. Um, it comes with all the options you need, it's got all the heavy weapons again. Um, I believe it's a kit that you can build so it's easily swappable on the weapons. Um, I think you can just make it so you can just plug them in and out. There's kind of like a, I'm just trying to see if I can identify where the weapons mount. I think they mount on the shoulders. Um, but I think there's kind of like a little a little notch that you can just slide them into. They're not solidly latched in, um, but it makes it so you can swap them out pretty easily. Uh, you get different open hand, closed hand, depending on what you prefer. Um, you've got wrist mounted weapons, either flamers or shuriken catapults. We even get a little doodad for the base. You get some robes to hang around him. It's a really nice looking model. And what more, it's actually a pretty good thing as well in the actual army. It's super tough. It's like a dreadnought. I think it's around the same price as a basic Space Marine Dreadnought, but it's faster, tougher, has better weapons and much better close combat rules. Uh, but that's indictment of the Eldar as a whole. They have a fantastic codex at the minute. It's got such deep options. Everything is good. Um, you don't see many Guardians taken because they're a troop choice and the Eldar don't really need or want to spend on troop choice. Um, they have to take 10 of these and they could buy 10 of these or they could take 5 Aspect Warriors and 5 Aspect Warriors are generally better. But nothing in this box is a waste because you do need to take at least some troops and a big squad of Guardians is no bad thing. Um, what's last in this box? We have... Oh, we have... Maybe it's been a misprack. Yeah, I think they've given us two sheets of transfers. I'm not sure if they're supposed to or not. Um, but two sheets of transfers. They've got loads of different stuff on there. Loads of cool Eldar runes. Um, they have the different craft worlds down there. But I couldn't tell the difference between them unless it had the little writing on. So I suspect you could just happily use whichever symbols you thought looked the coolest. And just repeat them. Uh, loads of them. I think these are for the different Phoenix or, um, Aspect Warriors or Phoenix Lords. Loads of cool stuff on the transfer sheets. And luckily, there's two there. Uh, there's this giant base at the bottom, looks like a 40 mil base. I can only assume this is for the Farseer, which is a bit of a big base for a uh, little toughness free model. Um, but they like giving character models a bit more space to play on and it helps differentiate them on the table as well. That's there and the Wraith Lord comes with his own special sculpted 60 mil base, um, which is always nice, gives it a little difference. Although some people dislike a sculpted base because it's hard to make it fit your own basing scheme. And then interestingly, the jet bikes have all come with the little, I think they're a 32 mil, we'll double check, they're the older style flying base. Yeah, they're a 32 mil, my best guess. Um, and that's actually really useful because on the battlefield, um, sometimes you want to hide your model, especially old are they have an ability to jump in and out of um, cover or get behind the line of sight blocking terrain. And a bigger base means you can't put your models close together. Um, and the other option for flying stands is a 60 mil clear base. Uh, so having them on these ones, and as these have come with the model, this is the ones that you want to use, makes the unit actually far more effective and usable. So that was the Eldar 
start collecting or battle force or whatever it's called nowadays um, and it's pretty good to my mind there's nothing in there that is not useful the wraith lord a really solid unit uh, the guardians you need some troops and there's nothing wrong with them they're a very good troop they have decent firepower they're not good in close combat but they're not super expensive and they have some interesting additional rules like rerolling ones near objectives that kind of stuff fast here you'll always want and the jet bikes are a fast and deadly shooting unit. Really good. They can get anywhere they want on the table. They can engage more or less any target with their shuriken weapons. And they are a tournament stable jet bikes. So having multiple of those, really super useful. So overall, I think that's an excellent combat patrol. That's what they call it nowadays. Excellent combat patrol and well worth the money. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Make myself look pretty.